Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm sure everyone can hear me now. And uh, my name is Neil Gump. I'm a KDE SIG member. I'm here to tell you about uh, Fedora's uh, journey to Wayland with KDE Plasma. So um, let's see. Before we get started, uh, I wanted to just talk a little bit about myself, just real briefly. Uh, I'm an open source advocate. I'm a contributor and package maintainer in Fedora. OpenSUSE, Magia, and OpenMandriva, uh, as well as a number of other distributions, but those are the most notable. Uh, I'm a member of the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, and I'm a member of the OpenSUSE board. Um, professionally, I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Datto, uh, who's kindly also a sponsor of this lovely event. Uh, I'm a developer and maintainer of package build and release pipelines using the Open Build service, uh, and I'm a packager and backporter. Uh, talk to me like afterwards, and we'll we'll get a uh, we'll have a fun conversation about how you know backporting is something everybody does, and it still sucks. So with that out of the way, uh, let's talk a little bit about Fedora KDE. So uh, Fedora KDE. Slide should show up about now, right? In theory. Yep, there we go. So Fedora KDE is a special interest group. It packages and maintains the cute stack of the KDE software ecosystem for Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, starting with RHEL 8. Um, we produce the KDE Plasma spin, which is the main deliverable of the KDE SIG. And it offers a curated experience to showcase KDE technologies on the Fedora Linux platform. Not sure why it lags so much between me pressing the button and the slide changing. That's interesting. So, we're here to talk about Wayland and KDE Plasma, but before we kind of do that, we should go over some uh, basics here. Uh, Wayland, the protocol. So it's not quite the replacement for the X11 protocol. Uh, it's intentionally designed to be quite different. It restructures the graphics stack to simplify the pipeline. You know, as I like to say, from program to pixel. Um, another way that people say this, it's uh, about uh, you know ensuring perfect frames, making sure you know all that you know the the delivery of graphics is is straightforward and simple. It essentially prioritizes minimizing latency and context switches for rendering graphics, and provides a framework to easily layer more capabilities as protocol extensions. Um, the very core Wayland protocol actually doesn't do a lot. In order to have a functional um, Wayland-based desktop environment, uh, whether it be a simple window manager like uh, Sway or a full-blown desktop environment like KDE Plasma, you need a number of extensions that uh, protocol extensions to support various functionality that these environments require. And the reason for that is so that the the process in which all these things are done are well defined and able to be secured because. Um, having these extensions also means that you understand like how these things are being done and it's very straightforward and standardized. This is in contrast with how things are done in the X world where you wind up seeing a lot of different approaches for doing the same thing kind of based on architecture and lack either with full knowledge or lack of knowledge of how the stack is supposed to work. Ironically, that causes a lot of problems when they're moving from X to Wayland because there may be impedance mismatches. But, you know, as I mentioned, there's, you know, differences between X and Wayland. You know, a lot of people will say something about, uh, you know, Wayland the server, maybe. Like, they'll think of it, like, as if there it's a, a thing similar to X11. But it's not exactly a thing. So unlike with X11, Wayland doesn't separate the desktop window management service, which, you know, you either call a window manager or a compositor or a desktop compositor from the desktop rendering service, which is the X server. These two are merged into one, which Wayland terms the compositor. It directly interfaces with the hardware through the direct rendering manager. 
in the kernel a lot using things like kernel mode setting and and stuff like that uh compositors are part of the desktop platform rather than separately developed so generally speaking you tend to see that you know for a desktop environment or a user experience that is graphical the compositor is actually essentially part of the experience as a whole it's developed together with it there's you know pluses and minuses to it but the main advantage here is that you can build a uh, a very tightly integrated um, experience where you have a seamless pipeline again from program to pixel where everything understands how it's supposed to work and the and the way that things actually happen in your desktop um, are reliable and and performant. So Wayland on KDE Plasma is done using the Quinn uh, KDE Window Manager, which is the compositor used in, in KDE Plasma. There is a fork of Quinn based called Win FT, um, they recently like gutted everything and and built it on the WL Roots library for building Wayland compositors. Um, but ignoring that for a little bit, um, with Quinn, which is what we use in in Fedora, Quinn uh, essentially interfaces with the Plasma shell environment to um, directly orchestrate how the um, how the desktop manages. Uh, the graphical environment. Uh, and this architecture is in contrast with GNOME, which has a library libmutter that is pulled into GNOME shell, which makes it a unified process. For GNOME, there is an advantage here in that the unified process makes it simpler for carrying data between these things because there's no IPC involved. Sorry, inter-process communication, otherwise known as IPC. There's no IPC involved, but it does make it less reliable because in the event that something goes wrong at the compositor code, your whole desktop session goes down. Um, the KDE Plasma implementation of this implements a level of separation that allows for the compositor to, to, to gracefully fail and restart without completely taking down your session and all your applications. So like a, a complaint that a lot of people I hear talk about with Wayland is, that you know, if the Wayland compositor dies, everything goes with it. This is actually not a requirement. This is more how the desktop or the window manager or whatever environment tends to implement this. So GNOME, Sway, and a lot of others, they tend to do this single process model where um, there is no recovery mechanism for when, when it fails. But in KDE Plasma, because of the architecture between Quinn and Plasma Shell, um, you don't tend to, you, you can actually recover from a failure without taking everything down with it. So we should go on to Wayland then, right? So onward and upward. Onward and upward, as I said. And that means, you know, making the changes. So I switched Plasma Workspace uh, to use Wayland by default with Fedora Linux 34. And we switch Quinn as well. Uh, that seems like it should be enough, uh, I assume, right? Like that's what the change said. So it says we're done now, right? Well, not exactly, not quite. It's not exactly done here. So. Those were the basic changes to start having the desktop environment preferred. But as it turns out, there was some work to be done. So SDDM, the Simple Desktop Display Manager, uh, is the uh, login manager um, front end, greeter, such, that is used with KDE Plasma Desktop. Unlike the rest of KDE Plasma, this is actually not part of the KDE project and this is a separate project. But it needed some work done to like make the Wayland thing go properly. So the first thing to do was to make it so that it preferred Wayland sessions over X11 ones. If Wayland and X11 are installed in the same system, we should select Wayland first. Easy peasy. But then there were some other issues, like we discovered that eh, the shell isn't getting correctly set. So if you used an alternative shell on your desktop environment, like I did, I use Fish on my desktop. Uh, when you're running in Wayland, it just didn't do it. It just sort of said, you know, eh whatever, but uh, that's not great. Uh, having bash always, even when you don't want it, 
is not what anyone particularly likes. It took a while to figure this out. Embarrassing long while to figure this out, but went through, finally figured it out and fixed it. And so that means, uh, you know, we had the login shell correctly, but there was still one more other thing that wound up initially like really screwing the environments up. Um, we had discovered at some point that Anaconda just kind of refused to start in the Wayland session. Uh, took a bunch of, you know, crazy debugging sessions. And I got some help from some folks I knew uh, who were like real big into the Wayland space. And they, they helped me like diagnose the problem. I eventually filed a bug report with KDE Upstream and they were super prompt and found a fix and I backported it. Uh, and we got Anaconda working. So we're good now, right? Like, right, right, we're good. Everything should be great. Like we have the installer working, we've got, uh, you know, the sessions are preferred, it'll boot up, it like loads, the desktop looks great, fixes coming in for 521 that were like super Wayland focused. Ah, uh, well, not exactly. Like there was a last minute bug of doom and this last minute bug, uh, when I say last minute, I kind of mean this. Uh, this bug showed up one day before before the final, before uh, Fedora Linux 34's GA, and it was a doozy. Uh, basically, the desktop didn't load when you were running in basic graphics mode. Like, so if you if it turned out like kernel mode setting wasn't working or like you were on an NVIDIA driver, or if you're on video hardware and the and you need to go back to basic graphics mode, like your Wayland session would just basically be stuck. It, it it wouldn't load. Turns out in a Wayland environment, you you actually um, need kernel mode setting. And while it is tr while KDE Plasma does have a fallback mode using um, the frame buffer device, uh, the so-called FB Dev mode, um, it doesn't work. Uh, and nobody's entirely sure why it doesn't work. But we also all know that FB Dev in the Linux kernel has been deprecated for like a decade. And so we really don't want to go there. So we didn't. Instead, uh, I sort of hacked in support into SDDM for automatically disabling the Wayland session when you don't have the ability to use kernel mode setting. So that's what happened. And then I made the changes to SDDM. So we I added a patch to SDDM that is downstream in Fedora that um, basically checks to see if no mode set is, if there's a flag file um, on disk. And if that flag file exists, uh, hide all the Wayland sessions, just don't process them and don't show them up. Um, and then and then after that, I had to uh, make sure that the UDEV rule that we used actually worked. So we made the UDEV rule that actually generates this file to fire whenever the no mode set command line option is passed to the kernel, which covers the wide gamut of cases where this could be a problem. But we weren't exactly done yet because, well, we did fix it for the installed system, but we still didn't have the live environment done. So uh, the last bit of, to actually, you know, fix this bug of doom to, so that we could release Fedora Linux 34 was to implement that logic into our horrifyingly large, weird script that actually is used to boot the live environment. It's called LiveSys and LiveSys Late. And basically we had to like inspect the kernel parameters and like generate the file manually, the same way that you would with the UDEV rule, except we had to do it during LiveSys because that's how that had to work. Um, and in the end, we actually did make it. We we leaped into the future, and now KDE Plasma runs with Wayland by default rather than the legacy X11 session, with all the caveats that I mentioned earlier. Right? Like, there's we still can't do it with no mode set. We still can't do it with um, we still. While it does kind of work with NVIDIA, um, my understanding is that multi monitor is kind of broken. Um, that is supposed to change. Um, as there are improvements coming down the pipe from upstream in Mesa and in the NVIDIA driver uh, 
that'll hopefully land within Fedora Linux 35 timeline. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that that'll actually come because that'll make things, that'll make my life so much easier. Um, but this gives us a ton of benefits. We get smoother graphics, greater performance and lower resource usage. Uh, like I, I clocked it and actually checked um, in the, on my computer. So I'm not saying that everyone will see this, but at least on my computer, uh, the, uh, the Wayland session is a full 120 megs of RAM lower than the X11 one. Um, and that's fantastic. Like that's a lot more free RAM to be able to do other things. And the plasma session itself uh, is uh, with Quinn and all that stuff is according to the C group where it all starts in um, with plasma system monitor. Cool tool, very neat. Actually does a good job of like showing you how much uh, resource usage you have. The total amount doesn't really exceed 200 megabytes of RAM when idle, which is impressive for such a featureful desktop environment using Wayland. Uh, I have never seen that on another desktop environment running at all, uh, whether X or Wayland, uh, with the kind of services that have to run in the background to support a full desktop environment. Uh, my laptop that runs Fedora Workstation, you know, I have one that does, uh, you know, it's like more than two or three times as much RAM for just the idle basic desktop environment. The fact that KDE Plasma is so mm -hmm. small is amazing. And like, it's, it's really, really good. So what's coming in the future for this? Like, obviously the basic stuff is done and we've got all these caveats and things. So what are, what are we planning to do next to kind of, you know, make things better? So on the bucket list, uh, I have SDL1 being replaced with the Compat library, SDL1 to Compat, which shims SDL1 applications to use SDL2. That's landing with Fedora Linux 35. That, that's coming now. It's already done. The work's been implemented. Um, this gets us onto a more, more modern code path and gets us to being able to get better performance for games, even in a Wayland environment, even running on X, even when the games are X Wayland. Um, SDL2 preferring Wayland native by default, as opposed to running in X Wayland, that's going to come either in Fedora Linux 35 or 36. This sort of depends on how things kind of um, hash out with the upstream Wayland protocols and stuff. It may not even arrive like in GA, it may arrive as a post GA update with the next version of SDL. Um, there's been a ton of improvements and a lot of focus on improving uh, Wayland support in SDL upstream. And there's been a lot of great work working with um, the folks at, um, on, at GNOME, working on LibDecor to get you know the client side decorators versus service side decorator problem sorted out for GNOME for games with SDL. And we're basically all go except for there's like a Wayland protocol extension that needs to be implemented uh, and uh, uh, there's some bugs with NVIDIA that um, hopefully will be resolved in the near future to make it so that SDL upstream will choose to prefer it. We may do it earlier because of what our, our support matrix is a bit smaller than, uh, than SDL upstream, but we'll see. I'm, I, I'm keeping a close eye on that and, and we'll hopefully have some further news to share there. Um, SDDM. Uh, using Wayland is something that I'm targeting kind of for Fedora Linux 36, maybe a little bit later, it sort of depends. This is kind of contingent on SDDM's uh, next release coming out sooner rather than later. Um, there's also some patches that are our downstream SDDM uh, that our SDDM package has that we need to clean up, we need to figure out and, 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 and do stuff around that. Upstream SDDM recently gained support for running in a Wayland reader. Right now, what actually happens is we start an X session just for SDDM and we throw it away when we're done to load the Plasma desktop. We want to get rid of that. That slims things down, simplifies the pipeline, and lets us do fancy things like, you know, direct handover, fade-ins, like all kinds of cool stuff, smoothness. And of course, further improvements in the Wayland experience in collaboration with the KDE community. There, I am pretty much regularly giving feedback to KDE Upstream about the sort of stuff, seeing what I'm doing, file bug reports. You know, I know Rex and, and Jan Grulik are both like working hard with me on this to try to make sure we have a fantastic experience. And 
And I'm just super excited about where things are going to go because with this with this work that we've done upstream for uh, uh, to to make Wayland like something that is really in great shape in KDE Plasma, and showing that off in Fedora first, it it brings us to the forefront in the KDE community, it brings us up to the forefront for the Linux community, and we're driving innovation forward and making the best Linux desktop experience that I think we could ever give. And I am really, really looking forward to making it even better. So, you know, if any of this stuff excites you, of course, come and join us. And, you know, in the Fedora KDE SIG, we have our issue tracker on Pagor.io, uh, we've got a mailing list, our matrix room, and our IRC channel. Um, most of us are actually in the matrix room, and our IRC channel is bridged into the matrix room. Um, and of course, if you're more of the async type, the issue tracker and the mailing list are great ways to, to collaborate with us. So uh, any questions from anyone? I know I kind of went a little bit fast, but... Um, I wanted to give a lot of time for people to 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 ask me about details and stuff because I think this is this is the good stuff uh, and and frankly this is I you know I want to give a lot of thanks to the KD community who've been really helpful with making this happen and it's just been such a solid experience and KD Plasmon Wayland is so good. Uh, okay, I don't see any questions in the thing. Let's go look at the chat. So someone's asking, do I believe NVIDIA will support Wayland fully at all? Yes, I do. I am surprisingly optimistic about this, which is weird for me because I don't really like NVIDIA very much. Um, so some context here. The, the folks at NVIDIA have been contributing to Mesa lately um, over the past, like, six to eight months. They've also done some work on X Wayland itself. Um, and really, this is something I want to congratulate the folks at the Red Hat desktop team, because they've been working really closely with uh, the folks at NVIDIA to make this a make this possible. And they're they're working really hard. And and I think that they are going to because one of the things that they changed uh, was one of the things that they changed recently was that they added to Mesa the ability to use alternate backends for um, GBM. So for some context here, GBM is the generic buffer manager, I think is what it's called. Um, and this is the me this is the underlying mechanism that is used by all of the graphics drivers except for NVIDIA for um, for handling uh, buffering graphics um, requests, pipelines, shaders, and stuff, and passing it to the GPU and doing stuff. Um, NVIDIA uses uh, EGL directly through a, a technique called EGL streams, and this is incompatible with GBM. And the consequence of this is that for compositors to support NVIDIA properly, uh, they have to do the work to support to code paths for this. And EGL streams isn't exactly well adapted for all the cases that GBM actually handles and thus Wayland requires. And for a long time, it looked like NVIDIA was never going to do anything about it. But this year, they did work upstream to make it so that they could add their NVIDIA driver as a backend for GBM. And they did a bunch of work to support X Wayland uh, hardware accelerated rendering. So what it looks like is that we're going to see the NVIDIA driver updated to have a GBM uh, driver module that will plug into Mesa and it will get auto-selected. And there, might, there are other benefits to this, possibly. Um, I don't fully understand everything that's going on with it, but like from the best I can gather with what limited knowledge I have of the stack, you know, with the way that this architecture works, it also becomes possible to smoothly handle hybrid graphics um, as part of it. Like you can do Mac OS style smooth, like, this application needs to run with the G dedicated GPU, so transparently switch the desktop over, and we can do this as a, a, a very minimal um, copy and write operation into the memory, uh, into the GPU memory, because between the two GPUs. We can seamlessly switch back and forth with no flickering. That's the kind of stuff that um, these improvements will bring to the table. Like, we've already had this for a while with AMD and Intel, 
and having this with uh, Intel or AMD with NVIDIA is going to be stellar. And it'll be something that uh, I don't even think, I'm not sure, but I don't think Windows can do this. And so that's going to be really a game changer for a high quality desktop experience. So, uh, so someone mentions in the q and I think this is a, a comment and a question. Oh yeah, KD is a spin. I think it's the only one that spin that blocks the release. Yes, so this is a spin that blocks the release, which essentially gives it the same kind of QA attention and quality requirements as an addition. Um, and the second part of this, are there any plans to give it more visibility and to stop being called the GNOME flag distro? Well, I, I want to. Um, this is something I've had a conversation with Fedora Council about. We are trying to become more prominent in this. We actually sponsored Academy earlier this year at the highest tier. And, and I, I am so happy to see that this, this year's Nest, we have so many KDE-centric talks. It shows that there are people really excited about KDE technology in the Fedora community. And I think it's gonna be, it's just fantastic. Um, I don't think we'll stop being called the GNOME flagship distro, but I would like to also be known as the KDE Plasma flagship distro. Being the flagship distribution for both is not a bad thing. That's a great thing. Um, so yeah, like I absolutely think that's gonna be fantastic. Uh, so another person's asking, when will it be available for RHEL? Uh, and Troy Dawson actually replies in here, it should be an Apple 9, haven't tested in CentOS Stream 8, RHEL 8.5. Um, so I have actually tested in, in RHEL 8.5. Um, so it will be available for RHEL because it is, it'll be available with RHEL 8.5. Most of the stuff that I did is actually included as part of our rebase to Plasma 5.22, and Plasma 5.22 is going to be an Apple with the RHEL 8.5 release. Um, it is not perfectly functioning right now, and my understanding is that we are going to work with the Red Hat folks to um, get the get the necessary backports for the uh, Lib Wayland components to Wayland protocols, updating Qt and Qt Wayland accordingly so that we could get those last glitches um, resolved. Uh, Qt is being rebased to 5.15 already, and that will bring with a litany of fixes and such. So expect to see a lot of this coming in the near future, uh, like this fall. Um, going forward, uh, I think uh, there's another talk that's going to talk about this in detail, but we're going to put we're going to put a lot more attention on on supporting RHEL uh, than we have in the past, and and that includes having you know a fresher KD experience. And if you're interested in that, please attend the talk about that. Um, that's, I think, tomorrow. Um, or it might be Saturday. Uh, I don't actually remember, but it's on the schedule. Um, so someone asks, how are the integration of GTK apps on KDE Plasma? Uh, they're pretty good. So we we went with a, okay, so Troy Dawson actually mentions it's Saturday, the KD and Apple talk. Uh, so going back to what I was actually asking, saying, uh, how's the integration of GTK apps on KDE? Um, it's about as good as it's going to get. Um, so we use, uh, because Fedora naturally has to ship a fair number of GTK applications, uh, we make sure that the GTK experience isn't um, terrible. Um, so it, it looks it looks fairly good. It, it renders fine and stuff. And the um, we we have mostly fixed the bugs that were related to GTK and Qt application interoperability on Wayland. So that's all set, settled and sorted. The X Wayland to Wayland clipboard stuff is mostly sorted out. There's still glitches here and there, but should be mostly fine. Um, for GTK applications, the main thing is that the styling is. Um, I think for some reason we're still defaulting to Edweta, even though we've told it to use Breeze, but Breeze is there and whatever. Um, we use the Breeze Twilight theme to make it explicitly so that GTK applications don't look ugly. Because when you use the Plasma Dark theme, GTK looks, it, GTK applications look like crap, especially GNOME ones, where the theming is just broken 
Um, it doesn't flip the text colors correctly. So the dark on dark, it's just unreadable, that sort of thing. So with, uh, with the Breeze Twilight setup, what we have now, that's all fine. Everything looks great. And we have a, uh, and the GTK applications uh, and the KD Plasma applications read and render perfectly fine. Let's see. Any other questions or comments? Uh, okay, someone says, uh, my main, their main issue with Plasma Wayland is the absence of session support. Uh, could you clarify what you mean by that? Because I'm not sure what you mean by session support. Um, session management, uh, Rex, do you, does he, does this person mean like, uh, fast user switching and, and multi-session management? Is that what, what they're referring to? Cause otherwise I'm not sure because like the KD plasma session works, it, it runs. Oh, that. All right. So the remembering, so to clarify, this means remembering where windows are placed when session when you log out and log back in. So this is so this is actually the code has been written. It's done. The Wayland protocol for this is called XDG activation. That's been approved and implemented in Quinn for Plasma 5.23. So when we upgrade to Plasma 5.23 um, sometime in early November. Uh, I think is when we plan to do it. Uh, we will have that feature back. Because uh, the reason why it didn't work uh, was that there just basically wasn't an implementation for it. Like there was there was no code uh, to like be able to provide that privilege operation to do that. The way it worked before in KD Plasma was with the X session is that they basically monitored all of it and it basically logged where the applications were, where, the, where their placement was. And, uh, and, and that's not... And the applications could log each other and that sort of thing. And that's not allowed in the Wayland world. So a protocol had to be written to explicitly carve out an opening to do that. And so that was done. And now we have that stage and it's going to come with Plasma 5.23 in the fall. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's more questions. Uh, oh, this is the session support Plasma Wayland. Yeah, so the person that asked this, uh, just to reiterate, Plasma 523 coming this fall to Fedora Linux. Uh, 35, and I think we're going to do also 34. I, Rex, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when Plasma 523 releases, we will backport it also to Fedora Linux 34 because I don't know why we wouldn't. Um, yeah, yeah. So Rex confirms. Yeah, we'll 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 have it. Uh, yeah. So for Christmas or Thanksgiving, uh, more accurately, probably in time for the U.S. Thanksgiving. So someone asks, "Do you think? Do I think that X Wayland will become a drop-in replacement of XOR? It already has. So." Couple of things, a couple of the factors for this is that uh, with, with XORG, with X11 as a whole, the XORG implementation, which is the uh, the descendant of the X386 server, the, the one that has all the device dependent drivers and all that stuff for running X directly talk to, to hardware, all that stuff is effectively deprecated. Um, there is no expectation that there's gonna be any real major further development or further releases um, within the next couple of years. And the Red Hat desktop team who has been maintaining it for the past decade and a half uh, is set to pretty much stop doing this by the end of the RHEL 8 life cycle, which is in 2028 um, uh, or 2029 rather. Um, so anyway, because it's it's really gonna go away in that, in that time frame. Um, you know, getting up to speed and ramping up into into a Wayland world was very important. Uh, and in this world where, at least in KDE Plasma's case, I mean, I can't speak to all the desktop environments, um, 
than Katie Plasma's case, X Wayland is for 99% of users pretty much at the point where it functions the same way that you'd get effectively the same experience as you would if you were running X11 natively. Uh, even if you're using ProSerm applications that tended to do um, fancy tricks and stuff, or they need hardware acceleration in the application, even with NVIDIA, that is now working out of the box. And NVIDIA has done a fantastic job in the KD community to make sure that their stuff is working. Um, so there's been a lot of effort in the in the larger gaming community uh, around KD Plasma because Valve has selected KD Plasma as the foundation of the of the desktop technologies that are used for the Steam Steam OS 3.0 that's going to ship on the Steam Deck. So, uh, you know, I fully expect that to be a stellar experience. Uh, and and the rumblings I've heard, though I don't have confirmed confirmation yet, is that Steam Deck will actually ship with KD Plasma running Wayland uh, because uh, that gives them the best performance. And I actually game on KD Plasma on Wayland. That was one of the original motivators for me to switch uh, KD Plasma to Wayland because I noticed that the frame rates were like 30% higher on one of my laptops uh, with Wayland over X. Um, someone's asking, does that mean new NVIDIA cards or does that include relatively old ones? C cards released in 2018, 2019. Um, so the X Wayland hardware acceleration stuff was included in the NVIDIA 470 driver series. That's the driver series you need to get the X Wayland hardware acceleration. Um, I am crossing my fingers and hoping, though I do not know for sure, because again, don't work for NVIDIA. I don't know anything about them, um, that though that the that the uh the actual gbm enablement will also be in the 470 series I, i'm not sure it will be and, and like it may not be because it's a significant refactor for how the driver works so that might be a new driver series the problem then is that a lot of the older cards like i think 2016 or 2017 or older 2017 or older um may actually like kick the bucket uh or 2015 or older i i don't know like I'm not too familiar with how the NVIDIA hardware versioning works, um, but I would assume that the next driver series that includes the full Wayland enablement will actually also include uh, this in there. So it may be fine. But note, you know, even today, you can use NVIDIA with Wayland with EGL streams on on, on Plasma. You will, you'll have to go through some, some effort to turn it on. And there's glitches with multi-monitor uh, pretty annoying ones, actually. Um, but it works. And x Wayland Hardware Acceleration will work in that environment, too. Let's see. Questions? So someone's asking, are there any tiling extensions for Quinn on Wayland? So I don't actually like tiling, so I don't know too much about this. Um, I know about... Cronkite, which is the Quinn extension for for tiling on uh, in Plasma. Um, honestly, I kind of wish they would just build in the Papua style automatic tiling at, into Quinn itself, because that would be that'd be fantastic. And it really doesn't need to be an extension. And being able to have it in there and then configure key bindings for it would be it'd be a major step up. And so I would personally like to see that. Even though I'm not much of a tiling person, I like some of the tiling bits. So it'd be nice to have some of that workflow available in there out of the box. So someone's mentioning something about free sync for AMD cards is only supported on Wayland. If you have different screens with refresh rates. Yes, that's true. So two things, very high refresh rates are supported on KD Plasma Wayland. Dis different refresh rates per screen or display head or whatever terminology you want to use, that's also supported only on KD Plasma with Wayland. So you want the best possible like high-end experiences. Plasma Wayland is the way to go. Let's see, is there anything else from the chat or anyone else having anything to say? Uh... Oh, Joe, is this where our GNOME user sits snugly with our fancy GTK problems? <laughs> Funny. Uh, 
Eddie, I want to give Katie another. You want to give Katie? Yeah, if you, Eddie, if you find Katie Plasma to be interesting, like, come along and try it again. Like, we're always improving. And because we update KD Plasma continuously, like, it's even in the Fedora stable releases, they're always improving. And and yes, I am the the, the person on Linux Unplugged. Um, yes. Hi. Um, hey, Davida. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, I wonder, Davida, did I convince you to probably try KD Plasma as your main desktop? It's cool. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. And I guess I'm going to give you all 10 minutes back because uh, it doesn't seem like anybody else has anything else. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's add a little poll. Uh, will you try KDE or a KDE? And there we go. A little poll for funsies, you know? Since everyone else loves doing polls during this session, I figured I might as well try it while we've got a couple of minutes here. Come and uh, um, let's see how, how this goes. <laughs> Someone actually answered, I like program manager. Whoever you are, you you make me you make me chuckle. You're great. <laughs> no joke though. Program Manager was like the first graphical environment that I actually used um, on Windows 3.1. So you know, if you use Fedora KD with X, uh, someone's asking, what if you use KD with X? If you use KD with X, try Wayland again. Just just try it. Uh, someone has, yeah, sure. Uh, someone has a question out of curiosity. Well, go ahead and ask it. We're here. Uh, so someone asked, why doesn't, why KD doesn't recommend changing the window manager? Who boy. All right. So in, so this requires some, some background context here. Same goes for GNOME. So this requires some background context. All right. So in the X11 world, there is this con the, the separated parts of the rendering stack. So you have you have your render server, which is the X server. Then you have your um, you have your window manager component, which actually does the drawing and, and uh, of the, the window borders and, and things like that. And then sometimes you have a third piece, which is a compositor, which does hardware accelerated rendering of the stuff inside the window borders. Um, most modern desktop environments actually merge the window manager with the compositor, so they're one piece. In the Wayland world, we take all three pieces and merge them together. Now, the reason why both KDE Plasma and GNOME do not recommend changing the window manager, and actually in GNOME you can't do it, because if you do, you will break a whole bunch of things. The reason why that's the case is because um, there is a lot of privileged service interaction that are actually implemented in the window manager for the applications and various desktop services. So for example, uh, you have to use Mutter to load GDM for login and Mutter is required for GNOME shell to run. All of that is tied in because Mutter is a library. That's the window manager part and the compositor part. And that's a library that's pulled in by the applications. And they basically do IPC with each other to hand off buffers and screens and stuff. In KDE Plasma world, it's a little bit more loosely coupled. There is some swappability, but like any anything you swap has to implement all of the private privileged operations between Plasma shell and the compositor. Uh, and so today, you basically only have Quinn and Quinn FT, which are actually both descended from the same code base. Um, it, with the Wayland world, you basically lose the ability to 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 freely switch window managers and be able to have your a full desktop environment function, because as part of the Wayland arc, most 
most desktops are making with their Wayland architectural changes, they're making the compositor contain the privileged desktop um, APIs. And so like swapping them essentially says you're okay with breaking a whole bunch of the desktop services. Uh, actually, uh, someone, Jeremy, oh yeah. So, so someone is saying a fair number of machines I use are running the UEFI frame buffer, which basically happens with no mode set. So those machines are still using KDX 11 because it doesn't work otherwise, or it didn't month or so back. You're right. It still doesn't work. So here's the thing. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and I forgot to put this in my slides and I should have, but like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's something called simple DRM, which was added to Linux in 5.14. The simple DRM driver essentially replaces the framework that is used for FB dev, UEFI FB, um, and all these sort of things. That so that you have it takes the um, UEFI frame buffer or from uh, and change it changes it over to kernel mode settings. So like the the Visa FB, UEFI FB, um, all those things they they basically map over to the simple DRM driver. And while simple DRM pretends to support all the different DRM API things, we'll just, they'll just like do the proper thing to silently quit or fail or like return the correct responses. But most importantly, since it's in the direct rendering manager framework, uh, it means it supports kernel mode setting. Even if the kernel mode setting will just say, we can't switch modes. But because it's kernel mode setting, uh, Wayland works. And so I am crossing my fingers that we're gonna have this uh in either fedora linux 30 uh maybe fedora linux 35 36 or so whenever uh but i'd really 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 like to have it backported into rel 9. uh i'd really like to have this feature enabled in rel 9 because having that feature in rel 9 means i have the confidence to completely get rid of the x11 session because gnome is also affected by this problem for gnome you cannot run wayland at all without kernel mode setting. It actually will just not start. And it will auto fall back to X11 with no mode setting. Um, so we just copy that behavior. Uh, if we have kernel mode setting, even with the UEFI frame buffer, we're in fantastic shape. We are able to use Wayland without any terrible, terrible hackery. Um, but another thing to point out, specifically KDE plasma -ish, there is a frame FB dev mode for KDE Plasma for Quinn. It doesn't work. I don't know why. If you want to spend any time like trying to figure out how to make that work, be my guest. Um, I just don't have a clue how to figure it out. But if you're if you're skilled in figuring that out, work with the KDE folks upstream. And if if we can get that working, then I'm happy to remove the, the fallback anyway and just fall back to FB dev. Right now it just doesn't work, which is why it why I had to do this. I was not expecting to have to do that because I expected FBDev to work, but it just doesn't, and I don't know why. Wow, three people like Program Manager. But I do like seeing that there's there's a good chunk of people who will try Fedora KD with Wayland. I'm I'm looking forward to, to seeing all those new folks, you know, using KD technologies on Fedora with Wayland. And then there's some folks here who are already doing it. Cool. Well, um, let's see. I think that's it. We're at, we're like a couple of minutes to time and giving, uh, and I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, well, someone's saying there's a long way for KD to beat I3WM. Well, well, I disagree. I think I think KD Plasma has beaten I3 handily. Now, if we were talking Sway, then there's a different story here. Um, Carlos, hmm, best way to jump on the KDE, use the spin. The spin's better because then you get all the presets done and it loads up correctly. Uh, oh, hello, person who I definitely know, uh, or I definitely do not know, depending on your point of view. Um, says, sounds appealing, but unfortunately, multi-monitor support's kind of a deal breaker. If you are not using, uh, so multi-monitor support does work uh, with everything but EGL streams and video right now. Um, at least as of the last time I got a bug report about it. So the thing is, 
I don't actually have any NVIDIA hardware myself to continually test this. My NVIDIA hardware is so old, it actually only works with Nouveau. So everything works for me because I'm using the open source driver. And even though it's dog slow, all the features work, including multi-monitor. Um, but uh, if you have the hardware, uh, you know, come by and test. And I know that the KD community folks would be having to get feedback. Uh, yeah, so if you're using Intel IGP or AMD or whatever, all of this works out of the gate. So you should be you should be in good shape to be able to try KD Plasma. And like, if you do have issues, come by to the SIG. We're on Matrix. Uh, we have a mailing list, uh, and we have weekly meetings on Mondays at um, seventeen hundred UTC, which I believe is one PM Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, Actually, I should re admit, reword the statement. It is co it, the meeting is actually set against Eastern Day Eastern Time, so it floats. Right now, it's at one it's at one p.m. Eastern, so whatever that is in UTC will change based on whether we're in DST or not. Um, so yeah, if you have issues or if you want to come chat with us and talk to us, feel free to hop in onto it. Our meetings are every Monday; they're open to the community. The notifications with the link to the meeting thing is sent to the KD mailing list, the Fedora KD mailing list uh, every Sunday. So you'll always get a reminder if you're subscribed to the mailing list, at least. So yeah, come by, give it a shot, totally. And yeah, I totally want more visibility for Fedora KD. I am really hoping that we can do that more. Uh, as with all the stuff that's going on, I'm excited, I'm pumped. I think we're the we're doing way better than we ever have before, and we'll keep getting even better. Uh, but there's only a couple minutes left, and I definitely want to give people the opportunity to go go to other talks, uh, get like staged up and ready. So um, thank you all for coming to my talk. I'm glad that y'all are excited, and I'm looking forward to seeing more people coming on to the KDE community through Fedora KDE. See y'all. Bye.